In this video, I'm going to tell you why I use Sony gear for my wildlife photography. And let's also talk about Canon and the EOS R5. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. This video has come about because Julien Barber commented on a previous video and asked, would I create a video to talk a little bit about why I chose Sony for wildlife photography and would I make the same choice today? And absolutely, I would love to chat about that. And so Julien, this video is for you and for many other people too who are wondering about that particular topic. So let me begin by saying firstly that I don't prescribe to any particular system or any particular camera. Uh, I use what I think is good. I don't think any system is perfect. Every system has its pros and cons. Let me give you five reasons why I use Sony gear. So the first thing is that I, I think you get a tremendous amount of functionality and power packed into a small package. And I know for some people, these camera bodies, Sony, Sony's camera bodies are a little too small to handle. When you come from a larger DSLR body, uh, body like this can be a little small. Now one of the things of course that you can always do is that you can always put a grip of some sort on it uh, this is not actually a battery grip, but it's just a L bracket uh, that does give you a bit more to, to handle. For me though, I find that uh, the size is pretty good. Uh, and uh, of course, one of the things that Sony has done lately in, in the latest cameras like uh, this one here, the A92 and also the A7R4, this, this camera body here, is that they've made the, the grip a bit deeper. They've made the controls a bit larger, and so that, that helps. The thing is that uh, many of us travel, many of us hike with our gear, and so size and weight really is an important consideration. And I've made a number of videos about how I travel with my gear and uh, how I'm able to fit so much. I typically uh, travel with three camera bodies and three lenses, uh, sometimes four lenses, and I can fit all of that into a backpack that I can take as a carry-on uh, on flights and that I can hike with and, and it doesn't weigh too much. So I think that, at least for me, it's, it's really a, an ideal system to, to have all of the, the power and the functionality and the capability that I need uh, but that is still very transportable. So that's one thing. Another thing is simply the lenses. Sony has an incredible array of lenses that uh, they are manufacturing as well as third-party lenses. And I've talked about many of them on this channel. Uh, the lenses that I typically travel with are this 400GM. I made a video about that uh, recently. I also often use this 135GM. I also made a video about that. Typically, my, my trinity is the 400, the 135, uh, this lens here, the 24 G Master f1.4, uh, and of course the apertures that you get with these lenses are fantastic because I've got f2.8 with the 400, I've got f1.8 with the 135, I've got f1.4 with the 24, and uh, I, I made a video some time ago about uh, how I deal with difficult uh, lighting conditions, and one of the things with low light photography, which I do a lot of, is that with these large apertures with f2.8, f1.8, f1.4, I've got a lot there to, to work with. So as the light drops, I can work my way through the lenses, uh, going to wider lenses, but with, with bigger apertures. And these lenses are have fantastic resolution, fantastic detail, beautiful rendering. Uh, some of the other lenses that I have that I will sometimes travel with are this is the, the recently released 20 millimeter f1.8 G lens. It's uh, arguably not as good as, as the 24 G Master, but it's very, very close and it's even lighter uh, and smaller. And uh, also this beast, the Sigma 
105 f1.4, which is a fantastic lens, uh, beautiful rendering, very sharp, uh, but it's a little heavy uh, compared to the to the 135 G Master and and a lot bigger as as well. So I, I don't travel with that one uh, very much. But the bottom line is that Sony has a fantastic uh, lineup of lenses, and, and they are really churning out some some incredible optics. And uh, there are third-party lenses like the Sigma lenses, uh, Tamron, and many other companies are also releasing E-mount lenses. And you have a lot to choose from. So the lenses are another thing that, 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 that is really important to me and really makes a difference. Another thing is the customizability of uh, Sony's cameras. Now, a lot has been said about Sony's menu system, how it's difficult to work with. I think every camera system has a, uh, a menu system that is, is its own. Uh, you have to just get used to, to every, every system's menus and yes, initially, if you were coming from another system, when you are first uh, trying to work your way and through Sony's menu systems and become familiar with them, it's a little uh, overwhelming. The great thing is that once you've got everything set up the way that you want, uh, you really have to, it's very rare that you have to go into the menus to, to accomplish much, at least while you're in the field uh, shooting. Most of the time, you've got everything on the custom buttons set up, uh, or you can put stuff on, on the quick menu. So that customizability is great, and I've got everything set up exactly the way I want it. I've got different modes that I can use to recall, different kinds of settings, uh, and, it, and it works uh, fairly well for me. Another thing uh, that has been great is that I think Sony have done a fantastic job of continually uh, evolving uh, their, their camera lineup. They've been very good about new releases and adding new function and capability to those new models and uh, this has been great even not even just the hardware but even also the firmware as well so they they will have been great about releasing capability in firmware updates and it, it's just great to have have that continuous update uh, happening another thing that is really important is uh, support so I found that their support has been Fantastic! I'm a member of the Pro Services program. Uh, really great program. Their, their support there has been fantastic. Uh, I had I've had so many great experiences with them. Uh, for example, once I, I I dropped a teleconverter when I was in Africa. I dropped it on the ground. Uh, the teleconverter was broken, and I. I uh, contacted Pro Support and I told them that I dropped it. I told them that I dropped it. Uh, they uh, they had me send it in, uh, and they pay for all the the uh, the shipping, and uh, it's it's couriered over very quickly. In the meantime, they sent me over a a loaner uh, teleconverter to use. In the meantime, uh, they then determined that the teleconverter was not fixable, uh, so they just replaced it. Fantastic service uh, and support. So in all, uh, those, those are five reasons why, why I've been using Sony Gear, why I chose Sony Gear. And uh, for me, yes, it's, it's, it's a great choice today. And as I mentioned, I don't think any one system is perfect. But for me, it absolutely works. So let's talk about Canon. Because uh, there are a lot of people out there, for example, who are Canon shooters now and have been looking at Sony for a long time and now they see that Canon are going to release the EOS R5. There are also many people who were Canon shooters and moved over to Sony. And so I get a lot of questions about the EOS R5 and people asking me, will this be a great camera for wildlife photography and you know, uh, do you regret moving to Sony and, and so forth. There's been tons of buzz swirling around this camera, mainly because Canon have really done a pretty good job of creating a lot of hype about it, almost to the point of ridiculousness because they haven't released the full specs on this camera. Uh, they've said a lot of things like it'll shoot 8K video and uh, so a lot of people are really excited about that. And there are some people out there who are saying, well, you know, Canon is, is now really trumped Sony and what's Sony going to do? Uh, so one question is, will the R5 be a compelling tool for wildlife photographers? And I would say that possibly, 
but given everything we know and everything we don't know right now, uh, there's a bunch of reasons why it might not be. So firstly, the price. Well, we don't even know how much it's going to cost yet. There are some rumors it will be around $4,000 US, uh, but no one really knows yet. So that's obviously an important uh, consideration for many people. Another thing is that they've talked a lot about the video capability and about 8K, uh, which to some people, perhaps that's important. There are a lot of people who are not even shooting 4K video. So 8K is just crazy. And when you think about the file sizes you'll have to deal with, uh, with 8K video. But one question is, if they've put so much effort into the, to the video capability of this camera, what about the stills capability? Will that be compromised in, in some way? Uh, of course, we don't know yet, uh, and no one knows until we actually have it in our hands and we're actually uh, shooting with it. Uh, one of the big questions always for wildlife photographers is autofocus capability. Canon have announced advanced animal autofocus, which sounds pretty interesting, uh, but we don't really know uh, what, it's, what it's like. So a lot of unanswered questions there. Another thing is the resolution. Now this is really interesting because Canon have not even announced what the resolution of the sensor is. They've said it's, it will shoot 8K video. And so from that, a lot of people have figured that the, the resolution must be at least 40 megapixels. So, so a lot of the rumors are that it will be around 40 megapixels, but we don't even know. Now one of the things to consider is that this camera, the EOS R5, is very likely to be a competitor to Sony's A7 line of cameras and not the A9 line of cameras. They say that the EOS R5 will shoot 12 frames per second with a mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second with an electronic shutter, but the electronic shutter is very unlikely to be the kind of electronic shutter that is in uh, the A9 or A9 II that is distortion free. So it's much more likely to be a competitor to the A7 line of cameras. But the thing is, if the sensor is only around 40 megapixels, that's sort of old news for people in the Sony world because 42 megapixels was the resolution of the A7R 3 But now the A7R 4 has been out for a while and the 60 megapixels in that camera has been very interesting and very exciting for a lot of people and uh, it's certainly of benefit to me, and that's why I have two A7R4s that I shoot with most of the time, and I go to the A9 II and its lower resolution of 24 megapixels when I need the speed and the, the capability of this camera, but most of the time I will stay on the A7R4. And although that resolution does come at a price, and I've talked about the price and the cost of, of that high resolution sensor, I, I love it, it has a lot of benefits. So if Canon is competing with the A7 cameras and the resolution is 40 something megapixels, it's actually not really that interesting. And if you're used to 60 megapixels to go back to 40 megapixels, it doesn't really sound great unless you're going to get something fantastic uh, in return for that. Another thing to consider is the ergonomics of this camera. Now, Canon generally have great ergonomics and looking at images of the camera, it looks like it will probably be great to hold and it looks like a lot of the dials might be and buttons might be in the right place. But one of the things to consider with mirrorless cameras especially is the EVF, the electronic viewfinder. In the A7R4, uh, they have a beautiful electronic viewfinder. It's uh, 5.76 uh, megapixels and it has a 120 frame per second refresh rate at the highest uh, refresh uh, rate. And that is beautiful to look at. And uh, especially for people like myself who, uh, my, my eyesight is not that great up close, so I can't really look at the monitor on the camera at the back and see it too clearly. So I really rely on the electronic viewfinder. And when you get used to a viewfinder with that kind of quality to go back to anything else, uh, like when I go back to the the viewfinder in, in the A9 II, which is a 3.69 megapixel viewfinder, I, I really noticed the difference. So one big question is, will Canon, what, what will the viewfinder be like in the EOS R5? 
And then finally, and this is really the biggest issue uh, with the EOS R5 is, what about the situation with lenses? Because the thing is that the EOS cameras have this new RF mount and there are no long lenses right now in the RF lineup and there are none that have been announced except for a 200 to 500 variable aperture zoom which is supposed to come later in 2020 and will have a aperture of f7.1 at the long end so it's not really that interesting so the thing is that if you are a Canon shooter today and you already have some of the Canon EF mount primes you can use those uh, with an adapter on the EOS R5. But if you're a shooter who is coming to Canon, what are you going to do? You're not going to go and buy EF mount lenses. Well, perhaps you might, uh, but you're basically buying old technology. So perhaps one thing you can do is you can get used EF mount lenses at a good price, but you're not going to buy new EF mount lenses to use with that camera. So you're going to be waiting for Canon to release or some other company to release uh, long prime lenses or even long zooms uh, on the RF mount. And so that puts you in a very interesting situation. So Julien asked, would I still make the same choice today with Sony? And yes, absolutely, I would still make the same choice. I think that at least for me right now, uh, Sony is a really great system uh, to use. Uh, I think that uh, I, I see myself st staying with Sony in the foreseeable future. Uh, a lot of people have asked, well, now that Canon have, have announced the EOS R5 and it looks like it'll be fantastic, uh, especially because of the 8K video, how will Sony respond? It will be interesting to see how they respond, but certainly uh, for people who don't care so much about the video and don't care about 8K video and uh, they're more concerned about stills capability and they're more concerned about the ability to bring a camera into the field and get the kind of uh, function that they need to, to shoot wildlife photography. Uh, they want great autofocus, they want great autofocus speed, they want uh, lenses that, that work for them. At the moment I think uh, honestly, Sony is, is really a, a, gr a great choice. It's certainly the, the, the system that, that I'm recommending to many people. It's not for everyone. Uh, there's certainly a price to pay when you're using, for example, the high resolution sensor of the A7R4. Uh, every system, as I mentioned, every camera, every lens has its, has its pros and cons. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you would uh, like to chat about this topic or any other uh, topic uh, concerning wildlife photography, why don't you head on over to this link, click on dot link slash wildlife photo talk. You'll find it in the description of this video below. And that's a place uh, that I set up recently where uh, we can chat about wildlife photography and we can do it in real time. And I made a video about that uh, in a, uh, just recently. And uh, it's been great so far. There are about 20, 20 of us there right now uh, uh, as of the time that I'm, I'm making this video. And uh, it's been great to get to know some of the folks and, and to help some folks and, and to have some discussions. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as I mentioned, head on over there, or if you want, just comment in this video below. I'll see you guys in the next one.